Welcome to the debut edition for 2013 for SVSU Red Alert, your weekly update on Saginaw Valley State University Athletics. I'm your host, J.J. Bain. The SVSU football team opened their home schedule with an impressive victory over Malone. We'll review that with SVSU head football coach Jim Collins. We'll also get an update on women's volleyball from Will Stanton after their impressive weekend. That's all coming up on this edition of SVSU Red Alert. Welcome back to SVSU Red Alert. I'm JJ Bain, joined by SVSU head football coach Jim Collins. The Cardinals had a tough week one loss on the road against perennial power Northwest Missouri. They had some extra time to work out the mistakes and it certainly seems to have done so as they were able to put up a very impressive victory over Malone. And Coach Collins, uh, I guess uh, what happened between week one and week two? Well, we made some improvements, obviously. We made a couple personnel changes, but more than anything, I think And, and I think we did that. And in that first half, it seemed like your team was really clicking on all cylinders, offense, defense, special teams. Uh, you got a score on special teams. The only touchdown you gave up was on special teams as well. But you go into the locker room, you're up 49 to 6. It, it was an impressive first half. And I'll be honest with you, JJ, I think that block punt got us going. You know, we saw the week before how ourselves getting our punt blocked was a momentum changer in that football game. Us blocking the punt. John Bryant, great play, great effort, blocked it, and then picked it up and scored himself. I think that got us going. It picked up the momentum. The energy was building, and then we just took over from there. And on offense, really a good balance between the run game and the pass game. Well, what was impressive was not, was not just the way we were blocking people up front, but the way our receivers were able to block, and it created a lot of big plays for us. We had a big 43-yard run from Mark Mays for a touchdown, but other 10, 12, 15-yard chunk plays in the run game that I think just got us going, builds momentum, and also sets up the play-action pass. And really, again, getting lots of different people involved. Uh, your top two running backs, Mark Mays, Norman Shuford, uh, both had uh, big days, uh, both of them recording touchdowns. Exactly. And we talked the week before about staying with the run, being more consistent, being more patient. And we, we ended up running the ball a lot. We ended up spreading between those two, and they, they both had a lot of carries. And I think the most impressive thing, as I said, was the way we were able to wear them down up front with our offensive line. And John Jennings really spreading the ball around to the receivers. And uh, they certainly helped him out with some yards after the catch and some uh, highlight reel catches, particularly the touchdown by Mark Thrash. Mark's catch was excellent. You know, it was right before the half. And I think that put us in the locker room at 49 to 6. And, and obviously, uh, you know, Mark is capable of making big plays week in and week out. He's done it his whole career at Saginaw Valley. And that was an impressive catch, an impressive throw right there at the end of the half. And after. Jeff Janis, you know, people are saying, oh, what happens week one? He has three catches. Well, they had three catches against Malone, but they went for 130-some yards, so uh, they were three big plays. We didn't have to throw it as much, and that was a good thing, I think, but we did end up throwing play action to Jeff, and once we saw their safeties creeping close to the line of scrimmage trying to defend the run, we went up top, and Jeff and John connected, and, and it was great execution. And I know you didn't want to underestimate the play of the defense as well because they were able to make some big plays for you that got your offense in good position. Exactly. And, I, and, and Malone runs an option style, and, and it's really you know, one of those things where you've got to be very disciplined in defending it. And I thought every time we forced them to run the option and get the quarterback on the perimeter to keep the ball, we were there to make a big tackle for a loss, force a turnover, force a fumble, and, and force them to make mistakes. And it was really good to see our defense fly around and play with that discipline. You looked at the stat sheet after the game, there were something like 10 different guys that had at least a, a portion of a tackle for loss over the course of that game. So again, getting good penetration into the backfield all night long. Exactly. And once again, what you want to do against an option team is take away the dive, make sure that quarterback has to pull it, get him on the perimeter, and then run to those option responsibilities. And we did a good job of that. And again, you talked about special teams and how much uh, that really helped uh, kind of jumpstart this team. And it's something I know that you spent a lot of time working on after that week one loss against Northwest Missouri. Well, the interesting thing is 
you know, I, I think we, we did some good things against Northwest Missouri, big kickoff returns, and had some good special teams plays, but the two that stand out are the two that cost us in that football game. So we did a great job of executing field goals and extra points. We were eight for eight on extra points. We made a long field goal. Uh, so that was good to see that improvement. Our, our punt game was really good, really solid, good snaps, operation time, good blocking. So we made those adjustments and improvements in those two areas. And as I said, the ability to create the big play, get that block punt. And, and really it was just more or less great effort from our guys. And, and that's what it takes. And, and if you play with energy and effort, you're gonna, you're gonna have a great chance to make big plays. And I know too, because of the way that the score uh, was clearly in SVSU's favor, you got a lot of guys, some valuable game experience in the second half. That was one of the positives of the whole thing is, is, is just about everybody who was dressed and could play, played. And, and, and to give those guys experience and get them in that game. And ga there's nothing like game experience to get guys ready to play. And so now you get ready for a Findlay team. We'll talk about that a little bit later on in the program. But since this is our debut edition, too, talk about what you learned from that week one loss against Northwest Missouri. Clearly, you're going to play them because they're one of the top teams in Division II. You want to see how you stack up. It's a 45-24 loss, but as you said, some, some good things came out of that and, and some bright spots as well. well. Well, I think we were able to go back and look at the film and see that we were not outmatched physically. Uh, we just got outplayed in that football game. And that's going to happen from time to time. And when it happens, you have to learn from it. And, and the two things that I think we learned is we needed to play with more effort uh, on every single play. There, there was a lack of consistency in terms of effort against Northwest Missouri. And our execution wasn't where it needed to be. And, and we knew that if we could play with more effort and that we, and we could better execute, that we would have been right in that football game. And, and, and when, you're, when you have that feeling, and we know Northwest Missouri is one of the better teams in the country, if not the best team in the country, we realize what we have to do to play at that top level. And so the Cardinals will work to continue playing at that top level throughout the course of the season. Their next opponent, the University of Findlay, Cardinals will be looking for a little bit of revenge after last season's loss to the Oilers. We'll review that with Jim Collins a little bit later on. But when we come back, we'll be joined by SVSU defensive coordinator Todd Stepsis. That's next on SVSU Red Alert. Your Spring Hill Suites Female Athlete of the Week is Brooke Tiller. Tiller, a sophomore on the SVSU women's volleyball team, helped lead the Cardinals to an undefeated weekend at the Urbana Invitational. Tiller totaled 96 digs in four matches, including a career-high 42 in the five-set match against Bellarmine. The Cardinals now head on the road to open GLIAC play in Northern Michigan September 20th and Michigan Tech September 21st. Brooke Tiller, your Female Spring Hill Suites Athlete of the Week. Welcome back to SVSU Red Alert. I'm JJ Bain, joined by SVSU Defensive Coordinator Todd Stepsis. Todd, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Love coming to talk with you, especially after a win. Yep, I know you got a smile on your face today because uh, the defense, particularly in that first half, really made a number of big plays. Yeah, we, um, we improved tremendously over that first week. Uh, it seemed like you know that, that first big game, a lot of guys were playing a little tentative and. And we got some things corrected. We, we, we worked with some different guys. We simplified some things. And it seemed like our tempo picked up a lot in, that, in the second game. And you were telling me that you felt uh, some of the linebackers in particular were key because, again, they have such an important responsibility against an option team where you got to be ready to defend the run or be ready to get back and defend against the pass. Yeah, I always thought that, that linebackers, that's a tough position to play because we're asking it to, to be stout against the run, but also we're giving it pass responsibility too. So, you know, from a schematic standpoint, we try to eliminate as many run-pass conflicts as possible, but against an option team, it's really tough to do because we're asking it, hey, you got to tackle this guy, but man, if that quarterback pulls it out, you know, we need you in this zone. So um, Brian Johnson in particular, he had his hands on a couple balls during the game that you know we wish he could have brought in, but he didn't. But you know, it forced his option teams into some long yardage situations where they have to throw it and, and help us out in the end. And I know, uh, as Coach Collins uh, mentioned as well, defense able to get into the backfield and really cause some disruption. Again, with an option team, they want certain lanes on any given play, and if you're able to get penetration, you can force them out of that. Yeah, uh, we, we defended the perimeter really well. I think there was a couple times up the middle we, we struggled a little bit, but 
again with the option you know we, you know, we were trying to, to get enough bodies in all places so sometimes we were too quick to one place than we were another but yeah I mean once we got the ball on the perimeter our speed really showed off and um, you know we, we made a lot of tackles for Lawson it was a number of guys it wasn't just one particular guy getting four or five I mean you know there's a, you know, a couple of DBs in there getting some tackles for losses some linebackers scraping off the edge getting guys down the backfield and for the most part you know I think we tackled really well so that's that's promising Talk about what you did as well to adjust from week one to week two, because I saw you in the parking lot after the Northwest Missouri game. You're pretty disappointed. Not so much uh, with all components, but particularly with the number of big plays that the defense gave up against Northwest Missouri. What did you do, as you said, to, to simplify and try and get guys ready for week two? Oh, we, we eliminated some of our calls that we were making against Northwest Missouri. We had a pretty big menu of what we wanted to attack, you know, because they, they, they had a pretty big menu as well as far as different formations and motions and shifts that they gave us so we felt like we needed a lot to combat some of those those uh, looks that we we're going to see but you know, we cut down our calls a little bit we simplified what we were running um you know yeah, we gave them you know some freedom to you know to to be themselves you know knowing what their responsibility was in the option but then giving them some different looks and some different alignments to where they could use their their strengths to their advantage and then um, you know and just playing with more confidence I think that was a big thing was that first game even though we do have a veteran group you know there's a few guys playing there you know they were starting for the first time at that position you know, you know maybe we had a guy play one position last year move to another position so you know I think that having that first game under the belt really helped and um, you know you, you could see it on the field guys guys look like they're having a lot more fun. How do you balance defensively the need for pl players to play aggressively with them to play intelligently and maintain their responsibility because I have to think with any given year the group of guys you have out there that's always a balancing act it is it's a challenge because like you said you don't want to ever put the reins on anybody defensively you want guys 11 guys with their hair on fire flying around getting to the ball but at the same time you want to play with discipline and you want to be able to do your job so just understanding a hey, okay we want you to be aggressive within this responsibility. So if you're defending the middle of the field for us, we want you to be like a, like a crazed animal defending that middle of the field. We don't need you defending the run up near the line of scrimmage. You know, we need you in the back end running from sideline to sideline. So understanding, okay, this is the call, this is the coverage that we're running. What's your job and responsibility within that call and coverage? And then within that specific job, doing as best you can. What do you do now to get ready for next week's matchup against Findlay? Yeah, we kind of got to go back to back to basics, really. Um, you know, because it's like you know, Coach Collins said, it's a similar attack to what we run here at Saginaw Valley. So going against ourselves in the spring, going against ourselves preseason camp, that's going to help us prepare for this game. I think we're going to go against each other a lot this week, which, you know, anytime you can get a fastball look during the week, it's going to help you adjust to that speed on Saturday. And then really, again, just, just simplifying things, doing our job, knowing our assignment, and then executing in the end. Hopefully you're able to do all of that and come up with a victory. I know everybody's uh, eager to avenge last season's defeat to the Oilers. Coach Stepsis, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. And when we come back, we'll be joined by SVSU volleyball coach Will Stanton. That's next on SVSU Red Alert. Welcome back to SVSU Red Alert. I'm JJ Bain, joined by SVSU women's volleyball coach Will Stanton. Will, thanks for joining us. Thank you, JJ. And you guys are coming off a pretty impressive weekend where you win all four matches down in Ohio. It was a real good weekend for what we needed. Uh, playing the, the, the mix of players we've got right now, we're real happy with the result. Talk first about uh, your match against Bellarmine because you drop the first two and then come back and win the next three. It was an exciting match, uh, and really, 
The whole weekend was a nice mix of different situations, comfortable leads, e not easy wins, but good wins. And then we got into a, a, a dogfight. The first two games, we barely lost by two and we were right there with them. And we knew we had a shot. We just had to stick with it long enough, execute just a little bit better and gave ourselves a, a chance to do that and then end up kind of rolling once we got some confidence. And it, it, was, a, it was a great win, really what the, the, the team needed at the end of that weekend. And again, for you, you get one win over a fellow GLIAC school. You get some important wins against some GLVC schools. Yeah, those regional matchups are so important, especially preseason. You kind of set yourself up for being in a little better position, uh, Bellarmine being a real strong team from last year. Uh, so that was, a, that was an important win for our confidence, but also for the record. Talk about what you're doing with confidence because you've got, you've got a lot of new girls who are competing for this team. We do. Uh, it's an interesting mix of uh, some old, oh, some old girls, <laughs> juniors, seniors, but also some freshmen and sophomores. Um, and, and it's a mix of key positions. And even some of the, the old girls, we've got a senior setter starting for us, but she also hasn't set for two or three years. So even some of our older kids coming back to positions they haven't played in a while. So they kind of play like freshmen and sophomores for the first couple weeks, but we're getting good experience. Uh, so they're coming along. How much does it help then to go down and get four victories in a weekend to, to kind of figure out too how this team is going to play together? It's been what the first two weeks have been all about. Uh, our first weekend at Ferris didn't go very well success-wise or record-wise, but we were finding ourselves. By the end of the weekend, we had a much better idea of what we needed to do to be successful. It is such a different team from last year. We only graduated three seniors, but really important positions, or excuse me, four seniors, but it really changed the makeup of our team. Uh, so finding ourselves this season has been pretty important. First weekend, we stumbled a little bit as we were learning, but we used a lot of those lessons. We really buckled down. The, uh, the Ferris tournament exposed a lot of things that, that we were able to fix or at least get better at. Um, so this last weekend, we were able to put a lot of those new things into place and uh, kind of came together for us. Who are some of the, the people that you really need to rely upon this season if you want to have the type of success that SVSU Volleyball has become known for? Well, it's, it's a little bit of everybody is what we're learning. Uh, we've got Kelsey Furla back. She was our leading attacker last year before she tore ACL uh, about a, a couple weeks into the season. So having her back has just been uh, fantastic for her, but also for the program. She's leading us in kills again, having that go-to hitter that just brings a whole new level of confidence to the court. So uh, she's someone we're definitely leaning on early. But off of that confidence and having that hitter, you can bring uh, other players along as well. Uh, so that's been nice seeing some of our, our young kids, a freshman stepped in uh, this weekend in the Bellarmine match and, and really put us over the top with them. So we're finding other pieces and it's not always the same one. So what we're learning is we've got more weapons. We've got more kids we can go to when we need to. And that's what makes a strong team is you never know where we're going to come from, except for Kelsey Furla. She's always going to come at you and then we'll fill in in other places. So we're kind of, that's what we're still learning is, uh, is who we need to rely on. Our two setters right now are pretty key for us because we do have a lot of weapons, which weapon do we use when? Uh, so then making good decisions and, and learning that setting role at this level, that's, that's been pretty key for us. What do you have coming up and what do you need to do to build on the success of this past weekend? Well, we start the GLIAC conference schedule this coming weekend. And of course, the longest trip is first. We get that out of the way. We get to go to the UP uh, Friday and Saturday for Northern Michigan and then Michigan Tech. And those are, those are always tough matches. The travel on top of uh, just the support that those programs have. It's fun places to play, but it's tough places to play. Uh, just fanatical about their volleyball in both places. Uh, so getting those matches out of the way after a nice weekend like we had uh, wouldn't be bad. We're learning how to play on the road, so we might as well keep it up. Um, so that's, that's going to kick our season off, and we're going to learn a lot about ourselves. Uh, the Michigan Tech match is uh, the last match of last season, our last road match, and we lost to them on the road, and that was a, a, a tough loss for us to end the season that way. Um, so there might be a little bit of revenge on some of the girls' minds there. We always play tough, just knock down, drag out matches with Northern Michigan, so we're looking forward to that, see how we match up with one of the last year's top teams in the conference. So we're going to kick the season off with a little excitement and hopefully a couple more wins. Well, good luck as you head up to uh, the UP, and hopefully you can continue this momentum that you built uh, with the win down in Urbana. Coach Stanton, thanks for joining us. Thanks, JJ. And when we come back, I'll be rejoined by SVSU football coach Jim Collins. That's next on SVSU Red Alert.
Eric Gandy, your male Spring Hill Suites Athlete of the Week. Gandy, a senior on the SVSU men's golf team, claimed tournament medalist honors over the weekend at the SVSU-hosted Cardinal Fall Invitational. Gandy fired rounds of 69 and 70 for negative 5 to distance himself from the rest of the field, claiming a 7-stroke victory in the event. He will lead the Cardinals into this weekend's GLIAC North Tournament on September 21st and 22nd in South Haven, Michigan. Eric Gandy, your Spring Hill Suites Male Athlete of the Week. Welcome back to SVSU Red Alert. The SVSU football team goes back on the road this weekend as they take on the University of Findlay. And this is an opponent that fans are certainly going to remember last year's game where Findlay was able to come into Wick Stadium and get a victory. Cardinals line up for a 54-yard field goal at the end. And uh, even the broadcaster initially thought Scott Stanford made it, uh, but it was that tight of a football game from start to finish. It really was. And what hurt us last year in that football game is we were playing catch-up in that fourth quarter. And when we finally regained the lead uh, with about six or seven minutes to go, we just weren't able to stop them. And they went down and kicked a game-winning field goal. We didn't, you know, we didn't give up. We didn't quit. Went down and we missed the game-winning field goal. But I think the bottom line is Finley's a good football team. And, and, and they proved it last year. They were 8-3. and three. They won some big games. And more than anything, we've got to execute and play with great effort. It's going to be no different this week as it was this past week or, or week one. Findlay losing their GLIAC opener to Northern Michigan on the road. Long trip for them, losing 41-31. What have you seen from them on film? Because obviously a lot of their key players from a season ago have graduated. And I think they've done a good job of replacing the quarterback situation. They've got Verlon Reed, who was at Ohio State, uh, another transfer at quarterback. And he reminds us a little bit of the guy last year, uh, with the exception of maybe uh, he, he's probably faster, you know, uh, he, a little bit more athletic potentially. I think defensively they, they play hard. They're going to mix in some schemes, 3-3, three, 3-2, three, three, 4 three. So I think that always gives your offensive line some things to, to work on. And then offensively, you know, I, the other thing about their offense, not just the quarterback position, but they've got some good receivers and a good running back to spread the ball around to. And what do you work on now? Because again, this is one of those interesting things where you have an option team in Malone last week, and now you've got ready, uh, you have to get ready for more conventional style offense in Findlay. Well, the interesting thing is Finley's a lot like us offensively. They're, gonna, they're not going to run the option as much as they're going to run a little bit of zone read, a lot of the zone run game, play action off of that, and, and, a, and a good amount of drop back and quick game passes. So I, I, what we have to do defensively is, is prepare like we're preparing to defend Saginaw Valley's offense. And I think that's going to be the focus of this week. And, and, and at, the bottom, at the end of the day, it, it comes down to fundamentals and execution of those base fundamentals. When you have a game like you're coming off of against Malone where uh, most of the starters are uh, able to sit out a lot of the second half because of the lead you were able to build, what do you do to try and make sure that they stay sharp and will be ready to go from the opening snap against Findlay? Because as you talked about last year, that was one of the things that worked against you is Findlay was able to jump out to an early lead. Uh, you know, more than anything, and, and this is the things we talked about at halftime of this past game, the intensity level has to stay there. You've got to stay focused, whether you're in the game or not in the game, whatever the scoreboard is. And that's one of the challenges of, of being an athlete, and that's one of the challenges in coaching, is to stay focused, even during those times where ultimately you're in control of the game and you're dominating. So, you, you know, we, we've worked real hard on it, and, and, it's, and it's a cognizant effort out of everybody every day in practice. Stay focused on every single play. Make sure the intensity is there every single play. And, and the best way to do is create as many competitive situations in practice that you can. This will be your first conference road trip as well. You and I were talking about it on the trip to Northwest Missouri. The names that people recognize, they're all experienced with this, but there were also a lot of guys who were making their first trip on that uh, road game against Northwest Missouri. Does it help them now to have had that experience under their belt already? Absolutely, JJ, and that's a great point. We do have an experienced veteran team, but we've got a lot of young guys playing for us that only have two football games under their belt. So I think having that experience and I think really two experiences. Number one, the whole travel thing. And we were fortunate enough to fly to Northwest Missouri, and that, that was, I think, a great help for us. Not just for that game, but being able to come back and get focused on the next one. This is, Finley's not a real long trip, so that, that'll be good. So the, the actual trip, and then playing in another environment. And, you know, Northwest Missouri is probably as tough an environment to play in, so 
I think that did a great job of preparing us for what we're going to see in the GLIAC. What are the keys for you to come out in this football game? Emotion shouldn't be a problem. I know guys were very disappointed with that loss last year, but what do you need to do to be successful against Findlay? It's the same formula we talk about. We need to play with great effort. And when I say effort, everybody running to the football on defense, everybody blocking to the whistle on offense, you know, running hard, all those things need to happen. And then there's got to be a great focus on execution of not just your scheme, but your fundamentals. If we can do those things and we can do them on a consistent basis, we're going to be a good football team and a team that's tough to beat. Well, we hope that formula comes together for the Cardinals this Saturday against Findlay. Coach Collins, good luck. Thanks, JJ. And we thank him for joining us, and we thank you for watching this edition of SVSU Red Alert.